What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I'm going to break down one of my favorite lakes here in the state of PA. It's actually the second largest lake in the entire state, and its name is Pimatuni. Now, Pimatuni is known for its walleye, white and black crappie, as well as its musky fishery. Now, Pimatuni is also known for its large and smallmouth bass, but it's also a very, very good panfish lake for perch and bluegill. Now, Pimatuni is actually split between Pennsylvania and Ohio. And what that means is, if you guys want to fish Pimatuni from a boat, all you really need is either a Pennsylvania license or an Ohio license. I wanted to mention that because it's important. If you're fishing from shore, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the correct license for the correct state you're fishing. Now, Pima Tuning is roughly 13,700 acres. In addition to that, it's got a max depth of 35 feet with an average depth of about 13 feet. Now, Pima Tuning's primary inflow is actually the Shenango River. In addition to that, Gravel Run and McMichael Creek also contribute to the overall water in the lake. Now, I spent many, many years camping at Pima Tuning State Park. I was fortunate enough to have a family that liked to camp, and that was one of our primary spots to go camping. So I was sort of fortunate because I was able to do a lot of fishing there when I was younger. Pima Tuning State Park is actually very large and it has roughly about 68 miles of shoreline. Now, Pima Tuning is really known for its muddy bottoms, especially in the shallows. However, another outstanding feature that makes this lake very, very fishable is in the northern end of the lake, it's known for its stumps. There's massive amounts of tree stumps and flooded timber all throughout the northern end of the lake. Now, Pima Tuning has a lot of shallow bays, and in those shallow bays, there's a lot of great cover, primarily milfoil and pondweed. However, those vegetations, especially lower in the water column, make it a great habitat for your muskie population. As a general tip for walleye fishing in springtime, early, early season, you guys definitely wanna check out the creeks. The walleye basically swim up those creeks like in Linesville, and you're gonna be able to catch good numbers early in the season. Now, as far as forage, Pima Tuning is really known for its gizzard shad population. In addition to that, we have multiple types of shiners, including emeralds, and it also has a good white sucker population. All right, so I wanted to provide some good information to give you guys a foundation about Pima Tuning. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to take some time and cover the lake from the north end to the south end and give you guys a few spots that I like to fish and that have produced fish for me in the past. With that said, I'm also gonna throw a few tips at you guys that will hopefully benefit you as you guys check out Pima Tuning in the future. All right guys, so how we're gonna analyze Pima Tuning Lake is we're actually gonna start on the north end and we're gonna work our way south. So I wanna zoom into the Linesville Spillway here because we're gonna take a look at a few areas just west of the spillway. Now, the spillway is known for its carp population, and this is a great area where you can take the family to feed the fish. Looking at the west of the spillway, you're gonna find at the very bottom of the south shoreline is going to attract crappie and bluegill. There's a ton of brush and a lot of submerged timber, which will allow you guys to vertical jig small jigs with minnows or maggots. Now, if we moved slightly north from there, just below Glen Island, including the lagoon in that area, that's going to hold a very healthy crappie population. So again, vertical jigging minnows or maggots, or even small tubes, and casting bobbers all around Glen Island and the submerged timber in that area is going to continue to produce fish. Now, moving a little north from there, I want to talk about the area next to the road. So zooming in here, you guys see the spillway and you see the road. In the spring, the crappie hold tight to that shoreline. And the reason for that has to do with the riprap. So this gives you, again, the ability to vertical jig it, or you guys can pop bobbers in and out of that riprap to be productive. 
Now, the north end of the lake has numerous shallow bays. And as you know, the north end warms up faster in the spring, which attracts musky. My recommendation for you guys is to work the entire northern shoreline in those shallow weedy bays with bucktails and make sure you work them around submerged timber and submerged vegetation. The other option is for you guys to troll up and down those northern bays with like a grandma type minnow bait and run that puppy about 10 feet behind the boat in the prop wash. This will produce musky up and down the northern shoreline. Now you guys can also cast the shoreline for crappie because there's a healthy crappie population that lives in and out of that submerged timber all along the north shoreline. The next area I want to look at, so let's move over to Harris Island. Now Harris Island is known for its brush piles. In the spring, you guys want to cast or you want to vertical jig the timber and that's going to produce crappies and that's going to produce walleyes. Now in June, you guys can move off of that timber out a little bit to where the shelves are. When you guys find the shelves all around that island, it's going to continue to produce crappie because those fish move off that timber into the first drop in deeper water. Now let's take a look at Tuttle Island. So if we go a little bit south there, we're going to see Tuttle Island. Now the area between the island and the mainland actually has great cover. It's got a tremendous amount of timber that attracts largemouth bass. So in the summer here, my recommendation is for you guys to work topwater baits to produce largemouth between the island and the mainland. Now if we just move a little bit to the left on the map here, we're going to find Tuttle Point. And Tuttle Point is known for its sand and gravel shoreline that attracts smallmouth. So here you guys are going to want to cover water. You're going to want to troll or you're going to want to cast crankbaits up and down the point, especially in the spring. Now walleyes, again in the springtime, kind of relate to that same shoreline. So again, you're going to cast minnows or stick baits to produce walleye up and around Tuttle Point. So let's move off of Tuttle Point briefly and head over to the submerged Soldiers Island. So between Harris and Clark Island, you're going to find a submerged island called Soldiers. And really, what you guys want to do here is you want to spend some time there early spring in between those two islands and do some wind drifting with some worm harnesses over top of Soldiers Island, and that'll produce fish. That's going to produce walleye primarily in the spring. And at the end of spring, early summer, the smallmouth are going to move in which will allow you guys to throw some crankbaits or do some vertical jigging with tubes and continue to produce smallmouth bass in that area. Now let's move a little bit west. We're gonna move west of Clark Island. Clark Island is also known for its really good structure and it's got a ton of brush all around the island. But to the left or west of Clark Island, what you're gonna find is a very, very large stump field. Now up and down that area is all really, really good for crappy and for walleye and for musky because all three of those fish relate to that structure in that stumps or in that stump field and in and out of that submerged timber. So you guys have the option to do some vertical jigging and you have the option to do some trolling in and out of that stuff. Now if you head north slightly, you're going to see the mud flat. And the mud flat holds bass year round. Again, surface lures or fishing the lily pads are gonna produce largemouth bass throughout the year. Now, if we move down the lake slightly to the left, we're gonna find Red Cross. Now, Red Cross is known for early spring largemouth crappie and bluegill because all three of those fish relate to that type of cover that's in that shallow bay. My recommendation for largemouth bass is to use spinner baits close to the timber or cast bobbers for basically everything else. Now if we go a little bit further south here, you're going to find another shallow bay in that area and that's going to be very, very good for spring crappie. Again, there's a lot of timber. The key here and the repetitive thing that I'm going to continue to say is if you guys find that timber early in the season, you're going to find crappies. 
Also, later in the season, other fish like muskie are going to move into this area because of the shallow weedy bays and that good, solid wooden structure. Okay, so we're going to move down the lake slightly and we're going to hold a little bit tight uh, to the left side of the lake. And what you're going to find here is, again, another major stump field. But before that stump field, you guys are going to find a number of submerged roads, gravel roads, and submerged areas like that that are going to hold sand and gravel transition lines, which always attracts smallmouth bass. So as we work down the lake here and we continue to move towards the, the causeway, you guys are going to want to continue to look for transition lines like sand and gravel and those roads. That's where you're going to pick up the majority of your smallies as you work south. Now, this stump field that we just mentioned, late spring, you're always going to find walleyes in the stump, but you're also going to find muskie in there because they like to hold tight to that cover. Now, in the middle of the lake in this area, just kind of west of Tuttle Point, west or southwest of Tuttle Point, we're going to find another very large submerged island called Hemlock. Now, my goal or my recommendation for you guys would be to continue to wind drift harnesses and get those baits lower in that water column around Hemlock Island to continue to produce walleye. This is a very effective spot. And also, in and out of that stump field and in and around Hemlock Island, you guys are going to find walleye, crappy, muskie, and catfish. And it's a very interesting area because you can cast stick baits and catch pretty much just about every type of fish that lives in this lake. Now if you really want a good shot at a muskie here, you know right along Tidal Point in that right side or that eastern shoreline moving southward, you guys control super shads for muskie along deep ledges or you can drift worm harnesses for walleye. Also crappy really really like this area because you can vertical jig tubes and continue to catch crappies up and down that shoreline. Now if we move south here, we're going to head into one of the best areas of the lake. So as we move south, we're going to run into the causeway. Now the causeway holds muskie and walleye populations all year round. Trolling any type of bait in this area for walleye and muskie will produce fish. One of the tips near the causeway is that walleye love the deep channels that were made by the creek bed. So again, drift harnesses on bottom bouncers or troll your stick baits to pick up those walleye in that deeper channel. Now you guys can also cast to the riprap up and down the causeway especially early in the season because you're going to catch crappy, you're going to catch musky, and you're going to catch walleye. So the causeway in general is just a great structure point and it's going to allow you the ability to catch multiple species on both sides of the lake. Now moving south quickly, since we need to cover some ground here, there's a lot of good brush for crappies and there's a lot of small stump fields that's going to hold walleye and musky. The whole goal here is for you guys to locate structure, locate weed beds in shallow bays, locate the stump fields and do some vertical jigging or trolling. Anytime you guys run into a creek mouth like McMichael, take a look at fishing the mouth of the creek or fish into the creek. Early in the season, you're going to produce fish out of these types of areas because they warm up quicker. Also spawning fish go up creek. So it's always a good idea to check out those types of locations. But really, I want to move all the way down to Stalker Island because Stalker Island is one of my favorite locations in Pymatuming to do some fishing. Now, east of Stalker Island, you're going to find really awesome weed beds that attract walleye, muskie, and crappie. I would say this area, I would continue to fish this for muskie in summer and fall. Also, to the north of Stalker Island, you're going to find an old river channel. And in that old river channel, that's going to attract a very healthy walleye and muskie population. So, check out these areas, hit them with your depth finder, and fish 
all along the shoreline in heavy brush to find crappies, bass, musky, and hit out your deeper channels for your walleye population. Now, as we move south, there's a number of really, really good spots. You have points and you have shallow bays and you continue to have transition lines and you have your main river channel from the Shenango River. So the southern end of the lake towards Turnerville is very, very good. It's narrow in that bottom portion of the, of the lake, but it can be very, very good on both sides. So again, do some exploring, check your structure points, and fish all those core areas. Walleye are gonna continue to relate to stumps, so vertical jig them. You're gonna find a lot of shallow sand and gravel bars. Look for steep drop-offs. When you find some steep drop-offs next to that gravel, you're probably gonna locate more walleye. And again, the smallmouth, they're gonna be on those shad and those gravel bars all on the southern end of the lake. As we get to the very bottom of the lake, I wanna talk about Ackerman Island. Ackerman Island is known for having a lot of humps in and around the island. Humps hold fish. Anytime you guys can find humps, you're gonna locate all kinds of species of fish. So, check brush, check the humps around Ackerman Island. Even though it's deeper, you guys can cast heavier weight with bottom bouncers to continue to produce walleye. Now the dam at the very bottom is known for its smallmouth and walleye and even musky fishing. The smallmouth are gonna be on the riprap. You gotta continue to look for humps for walleyes. And in that deeper water along the dam, it will It'll always produce walleye as long as you can get the baits down in the water column. Bottom line, guys, is pima tuning has a ton of features that attract fish. You have a lot of timber for your crappie and your walleye populations. Muskies like that too, but you have a good number of sunken islands. And you have a good number of sand and gravel bars. And being that it's a reservoir, you have a lot of submerged roads and road beds that kind of act as transition lines that are gonna hold fish. Check the Shenango River because the river runs through the middle of the lake and all around the lake and that creates a deeper channel. Other areas like McMichael in Linesville Creek, any creeks that run into Pima Tuning are going to have a creek channel that runs through the lake. Again, those areas hold fish. So fishing weeds, you know, eight to 10 feet of water or eight to 12 feet of water, fishing in and around heavy, heavy stump cover. And of course, fishing those transition lines and creek channels are gonna produce all sorts of fish for you. All right, guys, hopefully I was able to provide some really good information on Pima Tuning Lake. My goal with these videos is to really to continue to share information with you guys and try to spark interest in the sport of fishing. I want to do my best to help you guys catch more fish. If you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you guys like the content overall, always feel free to subscribe to my channel. If there's something you guys want to see in particular, maybe another lake breakdown, Feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my absolute best to get you a video on that topic. I greatly appreciate it guys. Take care.